Hey everybody, I'm Mike, and welcome to part two of my video series on styles of comic book coloring. Uh, this episode is going to be dedicated to the dreaded airbrush style, the ubiquitous and often over or misused style of comic book coloring. Uh, but the reason that you see it so much is that it's easy, it's a simple technique to learn, and it, it can be very effective. And although we associate it with sort of this you know, you, you've all seen it, this giant, uh, you know, shading in like this of these, uh, lassoed out areas and kind of using it as a big, as a big, uh, gradient tool, which is, which is fine. But you can also do uh, a little bit of detail work with, uh, with the same brush. And we're going to do Black Cat here. And the work that I've already done on her has been accomplished 100% with the airbrush and then my pen tool here, Shelly. And like I talked about in the last video, which was the elements of style, your tools, your colors, and the level of detail that you're going in the, in the various ways. Let's just talk about what we're going to use to, to do this. And we're going to do her, her bottom boot here, and then we're going to do her face. That way you don't have to watch me airbrush because this is so simple. I didn't want, I didn't want you to have to watch me do everything, right? And also remember that this is a big image. Uh, links below, by the way. These are J. Scott Campbell pencils and a couple fellows from DeviantArt who did the inks and the flats. And you can download this file and do the same thing that I'm doing. You can either color along or come up with your own styles. I, I think that some of the people watching this video are going to be past the airbrush phase of their careers. So you can, you can skip that. But I'm, I'm going to try and cover all the bases uh, with these first kind of four characters here. Loki, uh, the Hulk and Black Widow. I'm going to do some of the, the, the more common styles and then we're going to move into the obscure and the downright bizarre. And one of them I'm going to do with all photo textures. I don't know how that's going to work out, but that is a thing and hopefully I can make it cool. So uh, I'm using a soft airbrush, but I, I just have one airbrush tool and then I manually adjust the settings. If you aren't working on a tablet monitor like I am, that may be a giant pain in the butt. So you might want to create separate tool settings, but if you're working in Photoshop or Manga Studio, just set the hardness all the way down. That's, that's all we're doing here. Uh, it's super basic. It, you could even use the, the spray paint tool, the can tool. Uh, every single version of every program has an airbrush so that you don't even really have to make one like I did. Uh, I just keep it in, in this particular toolbox, which is my essential tools, the things, the basic things that I need to draw and to color. Um, what's the second? The second pillar is color, color itself. Now we're going to be a, lim a little bit uh, limited because this is all superheroes. The colors are going to have some level of saturation and Black Cat, of course, is going to be the exception to that. Um, not necessarily out of choice, but her, you know, her suit is basically black latex. I've made it gray latex with a tinge of blue, but all of these colors, if we were to pick, if we we're going to pick them, they're basically going to live right in this hue. I, I didn't shift the hue at all. Uh, that's another reason this is so simple. If you, I guess there's a, there's a, if you're, you're looking right here on the right side of the screen. If you see that move at all, that means that the hue, that I shifted the hue some. And they're basically all the same color blue, super desaturated. Same thing with her hair. Uh, her hair is a, a lighter shade of blue, and it's really, there's a, in here, there's a little bit more blue. So you can see the colors as it moves this way. Uh, I'm, I'm on the right side of the screen. I, I don't know, I don't know where I, I want to be, um, in terms of the, the cursor here. I did leave so you can see the size jitter on. Normally I would just paint with a, a crosshair. But I don't want one of those, there are the, I, with my, video capture software, I can make it a yellow dot, but when I, I want to see the actual artwork. So I'll try and be good about telling you where I am since I can move my pen around, you know, wherever instantly. Um, yeah. So this word, we're bound by color. Now here, skin tones tend to not be very saturated to begin with. Otherwise they look very alien. Uh, even aliens aren't, so you think about an alien green skin tone, it would still be closer to here like no one's no one's skin looks like that not even the hulk 
uh, the Hulk will have saturated parts to him. So since we don't want this, I mean, we don't want this image also to not, I mean, it's not really going to go together considering there's different styles, but I'm going to try and, and, uh, and make the color choices as interesting as I can uh, as we move along. And color is a big part of style. Um, you have, you know, how far, look at, look at how, take this piece. This is a, a material choice, but the, the, the darkest parts are black right? And the lightest parts are white. So it has a full range of values. You can't get any more contrast than black and white. Um, color theory might say something about that, but I mean, that's basically uh, it's as big of a jump as you can possibly get, right? Now it isn't as dramatic as you can get, uh, but we can, we'll, we'll talk more about that later. And now level of detail. So here, I, I like to think of level, level level of detail as being flat to photorealistic. This is comic booky, right? We're we're capturing the forms. We're just sort of giving it shape. We're not uh, detail. We're not making this sort of inked in hair. We're not brushing it in with a brush, a brush br wait, a hairbrush. I have hairbrushes, and they can be very effective. You can create really realistic effects. But this is a, you know, I would say on a scale of ten, this is a three in terms of flat to photo sparse to clutter this is this is certainly not as contoured as we could get it we could capture a lot more forms in here so that's really ca like the number of forms that you could capture versus what is actually there and in this this is again this is somewhere in the middle there's a little bit of contour i mean we we, we kind of created a i should um, we like the royal we i i kind of created a a good shape here up in her to, you know, I will say this about this character. She's stupid, right? She's kind of Marvel's answer to Catwoman. And Selena Kyle is a really cool character. But Felicia Hardy is, she's dumb. She's stupid and she's normally not wearing any clothes, which is even more stupid. But I just, I don't, I don't like over-sexualized chicks for the sake of like, oh, spider woman needs a foil. So just put somebody with no clothes on. Like, I feel like it's pandering in a way. It's just the way that, you know, when you, when you see a movie that, like, they just put nakedness in for the sake of, the, like, it's not part of the story. They just put it in because, like, they had some sort of Beavis and Butthead moment. Like, oh, like this would be cool. This will sell tickets or, like, whatever. Like, you're you're trying to sell me. You're not selling me anything with the story. And that's what I don't like. Like, if you want to, like, you, you can make a comic book where everyone's naked all the time if you make it part of the story, right? Like, look at Westworld. That's a great example. Like, there were naked people constantly in Westworld. But, like, at no point were, like, this is gratuitous or this is stupid or why doesn't Thandie Newton have any clothes on? Like, you were, that was never the thing. It was, this is, this is what would happen. It was believable. So, see, that's why, this is why people who write, like, I'm, I'm a writer, and not like I came into coloring very recently. I've actually only been working as a colorist for a couple months. And I mean, I've been digital painting and stuff for a long time, but uh, never for money. And, and so I, I just, I, I don't look through things through the lens of color. I look at them through the storytelling. So I may go on long rambles about stuff like that. And I apologize. I can't help myself. So what are we going to do? Also, one more thing. I am working in Mega Studio. I'm pretty new to Mega Studio. I'm getting better. I've got a lot of brush creation under my belt. I spent a good part of the weekend organizing and kind of figuring out the landscape outside of the canvas. I had mainly for about two or three weeks, just uh, maybe two weeks. I've only, I've probably colored maybe eight like pinup pieces in Mega Studio. So this is going to be so you're going to see me, I'm going to get confused. Sometimes I'm not going to know what layer I'm on and things like that. As far as my layer setup for this, I should probably go over that. I have a holds layer on top of the inks. Uh, the inks are like, it's completely anti-alias, so I don't have to, I'm not using multiply mode. I'm just using normal. Uh, there's lots of ways to set up inks. And maybe if someone, if at any point you have a question, feel free to contact me via Twitter at the Mike Wayner. That'll be in the thing below. Um, or so tweet me questions and I'll be happy to either make a little response video or if I can just send it via text if you if I do something that that's confusing so I have a clipped special effects layer um, for screens and who knows what I'll use that for but these are mainly for modifying the inks 
And then I have the inks. I have the inks and flats copied and locked at the bottom because I guarantee you I messed something up. I'm notorious for painting on the wrong layer and things like that. And then clipped to the flats, I have a multiply layer, which we're going to definitely use for cell shading, but we may use it from, for some other stuff too. I have an overlay layer, a screen layer. I don't know what I'm going to use those for, but I just thought I'd put them there just in case. And then these are all just locked pieces to, to her flats. And I'll be grabbing from the flats and moving them up here. So, yeah. But um, I'm probably not going to do the finishing, like finish each image. Like especially with some of the more stylized stuff, they need finishing layers. Um, I think that I'll do, I'll just do one video at the end where I show all sorts of finishing techniques. Things like uh, coloring, doing overlay layers and blurring for the for a kind of a glow effect to the ink. You can do all kinds of stuff, but uh, let's finish let's finish this off. And let's start with her her leg down here. So the light's kind of coming in from up over here-ish. So the front side is going to be the one that is in the light. And I'm just going to use this soft airbrush. I'm going to need to get I believe this is costume. Yeah. So so for airbrushing and general comicness, what I like to do is, um, and you can see like these, it's not super hyper detailed. You make sure that you're, you're dealing with your scale. If this was a cover, right? And she was this big, then we would want, this would need to look very different. This, but these big blocked shadows are the things that you see when you zoom out that your eye can see. And so that's why they look like that. It's very important to understand you know, especially if you're going to work zoomed in like this, and you have to in a, in a big image. So, the calculation that I like to use for basic airbrushing, like grab and grad, traditional comicness, is that if you're going if you're going lighter, go halfway to white. If you're going darker, go halfway to black. So halfway to white, and we'll keep it pretty much the same hue and see how it looks. And that's not bright enough. I need to go a little bit brighter. We're just kind of laying in a little bit of color here. And we'll go back to this face and we'll. Okay. So now we have a fancy gradient, right? And for this shadowed area, we're going to have, it's going to crinkle here and here, and we're going to probably go all the way to white. So what we want to do is we're going to bring on our marquee tool. Um, way around like this and we're going to give that a super dark base because the way that latex works and we're not trying to go with photorealistic latex the way that latex works is that it tends to it tends to have these big dark splotches and then when it crinkles up the light goes all the way and peaks all the way at white so we'll have it peak somewhere along here something like that so we'll go super dark we don't want it totally even. Actually, what we want like that. And then I am going to go to Selection, Shrink Selected Area, and I'm going to shrink it by 5 pixels in all directions. Now, I'm going to move this up a pretty good bit. And I'm going to kind of you know, think of it like painting a vignette. We're going to do the same thing. Now, I can't guarantee that this is going to work for the latex. But we're going to try it. Selection, shrink selected area. We're going to go big this time. We're going to go 7 pixels. So we're almost up to white. And 
of the other the other tool that we're using is this pen. Um, it is just there's a little bit of bleed to it. Imagine an ink pen. I call it Shelly because it looks like Shell Silverstein's drawings. It just tends to spit a little bit of ink, and then it's got just a tiny amount of shape dynamics. It's almost the the classic pen tool. And I want to go over here. Now these white spots, if they're too small, they they look uh, like like this little indentation here might not look good once we zoom out. So it's important that we that we zoom. I'm just trying to find the spots where this looks okay. Because it's such a big jump, you know? That hard edge is just a little too much. Probably looked fine zoomed out, but Inks are a little busier than I'd like them to be, but I think it's a cool image. At least her face is sparse. Probably don't need to go that far, huh? If you can see, this image is 10,000 pixels wide. I probably shrank it. The original is maybe bigger, but 10,000 pixels wide is, uh, what is that, 30 inches? And then it's 300 DPI is what I color at. Be careful when you download these really big images. A lot of them will be the original, especially the inks. They'll be in 600 DPI, and 300 DP, or 600 DPI might just wreck your computer in terms of coloring. All right. Her face. We're going to use this is just a flat brush, meaning like a, think of like a big marker. Although I have a marker setting, and that's different. But I see her face as being a little sallow, just a little. Let's see how that looks. No, it's a little bright. Bring it down. Yeah. So the light's coming in sort of from up over here. So this part of her face is going to be light, and all underneath here is going to be in shadow, and then her chin is going to cast a shadow. Right? Well, faces usually don't need as much of a value difference. It can be very dramatic. A little bit of value difference can be very dramatic. Not always the case. Oops, well, I need a I need the, the airbrush. It seems a little not saturated enough for me. A little bit more color in there. There we go. Hmm. 
doing my best impersonation of and I haven't airbrushed a face in a really long time. I was just reading volume four of The Boys, which was written by Garth Ennis, and it's not Dylan who does the art. I don't know who does the art. But it is exclusively, air, it's like comically, no pun intended, airbrushed. And it is, I mean, it's a, it's a great story. The, the, you know, it's fantastic. However, the airbrushing, like, if the story wasn't so good, I wonder if the airbrushing would work. Because it's, uh, it's a bit ridiculous. Some of this, when we go too far here, we will uh, we'll blend it down. We're almost being too subtle, considering how far this is zoomed out. We may need to uh, pull it out. a little heavier handed if it doesn't look right. Alright, I'm going to blend this is kind of puffy blender, which just softens the edges. It doesn't really blend. Just on the spots where you can see that it was airbrushed. Now, to avoid that, you guys can use the, uh, the marquee tool. But I try and, uh, and avoid those and avoid the marquee tool when I can. Just a personal preference. I mean, it's certainly totally necessary at times, and stylistically, sometimes it's a, it's a very important choice because you want those the the layers of color upon layers. And see, we're just going to like not trying to create a, a super realistic effect here. We're just trying to give her face a little bit of shape. We go back to this base color. The highlight is not going to need to be. With faces, the and skin, the the highlights tend to be more desaturated, and the the shadows more saturated. Hmm. There we go. Almost at just, a, I mean, I'm assuming that this is sunlight. It's another thing. I mean, since we're dealing with latex, we don't have to deal with a lot of colored stuff, but there's a lot going on to this image, and I haven't really established a light source, probably because I'm thinking about maybe just having different light sources with each one, but if you wanted to make this more believable, you'd probably throw a little bit of yellow on the rim of her hair and I just put some on the rim of her cheek, and it just adds, but it doesn't make it realistic, it makes it believable, right? And that's important. Oop, too much. So, something is wrong right here. This is going to throw a big, I get it, so what's going to happen is, like that. And then 
this is going to be more like that. You got to think that this big bouffant is affecting some of that light, right? Move it in like that. All right, let's see how this looks. What you want to avoid in faces is getting, what I don't like to see is a lot of gray. I like to see a lot of, uh, and there's definitely going to be, see up close it looks okay, but this is going to, if that's the light, it's going to come down the chin some. It's not really. See, that looks nice. Right? Perfect? Far from it, but we're just airbrushing today. Also, as we established, Black Cat is a stupid character and doesn't deserve all of our attention. So, I am going... Actually, I need to go back to the costume, maybe? Yeah. I need to do just a little bit on this. That's the original flat color that I started with, which is super blue. I don't know what color her... I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to Google up a picture of her. I don't know enough about what her costume looks like. Black Cat Comics. It is normally she's all in black. And she never has any clothes on. Oh, and she's making out with Spider Man. You can do better, Peter Parker. All right, so normally she's all in black, and she's kind of got fur around her ten sizes too big melons. And, oh, some of these, some of these she looks like a, kind of like, like a trashy French maid. Like, she looks like she's wearing a French maid Halloween costume. And why do we even call that, like, black and white lace thing French maids? Do French maids really dress like that? I don't know. I'm not very smart. All right, so I'm just going to match it. I'm just going to kind of match it with this. I'm just going to grab this gray color right here. I'm going to grab a flat brush. I'm going to color it in. And I'm going to go back. This isn't really something that you want to airbrush. Well, it is in a sense that... All right, this is what we'll do. Well, that was not an airbrush. We'll just add a gradient like this, and then maybe right here we'll go up and over here and like that. And then we'll just do some highlights because it really doesn't need anything to be decent, right? You can just find little spot there. I mean, what material is going to stick to your face like that? They want it to be latex. But that's stupid. You need a duct tape to hold it on. Or maybe if you were just really, really sweaty. I don't know. Uh, you're not believable to me, Felicia Hardy. Uh, I don't totally agree with these flats. Mm-hmm. I think we're missing some pixels. We are missing some pixels. All right. Have to go to the flats here. Select this. Look at a. Can't do it with a flat brush. That's not going to work. So. Wait. I'm on the flats layer. This should just be the flats. 
right? It shouldn't come through there. Ooh, I'm a dummy. It caught those pixels on top. Now we have a whole thing. How are we going to fix this? I know how. All right. Now we're problem solving. Now you guys are learning something. So, what's our problem? The flattest messed up, and I didn't check this thing ahead of time. Those pixels probably don't matter because... Um, why, don't, why wouldn't they matter? Excuse me. You know what? I don't want to fix it like that. Let's see how it looks. And then when I... This is what we'll do. We'll finish this up. I'll do these lips. And then we will knock this image down. We'll merge it down to one layer. And then I'll just color right on top of it. And then merge that down. And then we'll call it a day. Uh, if that was... If those were in a different spot, I'd probably have a different suggestion. But... You know, her. Talk to your face real fast. Shouldn't we have something like this right there? Wow, that is really light right there. I don't know if that's going to work. Maybe? Let's see. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Sorry. Hmm. Oh, I didn't do the area inside the... Whoa, 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 whoa. I like J. Scott Campbell. I have talked about the issues that I have with him and some of the things he does to chicks, but man, this guy draws eyes. Comic eyes. Really well. Am I on the right thing? Okay. I think female face, female features just in general, since they're so much softer and curvier, they, they tend to be easier to, to capture. You know, but we could have put, I put her cheekbone right here, but we could have, you know, you could move that around. It could. It's interesting when there's not a lot of, of lines, you can really make the face look di like two different people might interpret the same face differently. I find that interesting. Uh, let me get rid of these layers right here. We'll bring them back for the cell shading. And I'm going to just call this flat cat colors. And then I'm going to merge everything down into this as soon as I get done here. What do we have left? I'm going to go into the flats. I'll do the eyes, the teeth, and we'll save the lips. I mean, I'll just do the lips freehand without just on top. That won't be that hard.
So this is eyes, teeth. Um, what do I need to do with these eyes? Are they a nice color? I think they need to be more blue. Oops. I'm supposed to be using the airbrush here. I think we need to take them a little more. Easy peasy. Now the teeth. You want her to have teal teeth? Hmm. Does she have big teeth? Does she have. It's so zoomed out, it doesn't matter, but we may as well just do it, right? I think really if we just threw some other color in there, it would be fine. Is that painting on there? I can't even tell. And just a second. Whoa, whoa. I didn't know he was going to do that, but I said hang on at the appropriate time. I just realized how far I'm talking away from the mic. I hope that the audio is not quiet. I would hate to have to re-record this video. I can't believe we've been doing it. It's, it's so strange that this would have taken, you know, eight minutes if I was doing it by myself. But when you're explaining stuff, uh, I'm just not used to. I'm a I. I do a, a podcast, so I'm, I'm used to speaking in front of the microphone. That's not the problem. It's just I'm not used to doing it while I'm drawing yet. I have a couple speed paints, and like kind of while I was learning, really learning Manga Studio, I, I posted some videos, but uh, this is going to be my first like in-depth something that I planned, this video series, and hopefully people like it. All right, give me just one second. Get our airbrush. I'm gonna use the marquee tool for this. No, I'm gonna do something like that, and Maybe. 
maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure how much color should be in here. Let's see. Let's go right along the edge. Even go darker. Yeah, I think that gives enough. Up close, that looks like complete trash, but that's exactly what it needs to be when you zoom out, right? Look right there. How's that look? Is that about how we're going to be seeing the image? Maybe a little bit, a little bit zoomier. Right there, that's how it needs to look. So that's what we're going to do. All right, what do we have left? We did her leg, we did her face, we need to do her lips. So let's uh, call this black tack colors, and I'm just going to use this combined to the layer below button. Actually, what I can do is you can just select. Uh, that's not what I want. How about that? And then I bet I can merge layers. Merge layers. Whoa. That's not what I want to do at all. I want to merge selected layers. I told you guys I don't know how to use Mega Studio. This was Photoshop? Okay. Merge, combine selected layers. G. No, oh, it's a G. All right. Black cat colors. Boom, 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 boom. So now what do we need to do on black cat color? Well, here, I should make another layer, just in case I screw it up, right? So we're going to go into her lips. I'm going to take this inking brush, because I know how it's... I know how it works. See, was that so hard? Flatter guy? Dummy, jeez. Advertising free flats, can't even do your job right. There's actually another little spot. There's these pixels right here that I couldn't get rid of. And this is making me crazy. Uh, did I sound angry? I'm not an angry person, I promise. How to make, how to soften that up. All I can do is delete pixels by covering them up with a color since it's on a separate layer. So we can't do anything about that. But were there any other pixels that were astray? I don't think so. I had to draw a couple lines on here. Uh, but, yeah. All right, so are we happy with her lip color? I don't know that we are. So I need to refer only to the selected layer. I don't know. No, right. Yeah, I can't change the color on both. Well, I could, but that would be complicated. Real question is, do her lips look the right color? I'm okay with her lip color, so let's just let's just go with it, right? And we're gonna go super desaturated. Let's see if. I feel like the opacity is way down. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. So, we're just going to want to do maybe the top of the lip. Like this. And then, I think she needs to be just. Don't want to get those teeth. Who needs a selection? And this is going to be kind of like this. And this one right there. This one right there. And and
Hello. I really like to paint with texture, so it's just, this is a strange feeling. Airbrushing 100% of everything and not giving anything texture and only blending when you have to. Alright, I think she looks okay. I don't know that I, I hope I covered everything that has to do with airbrushing. Like, it's just, it's such a fundamental technique. And I hope that you, I hope that this video did demonstrate that if you go in there and kind of draw with it a little bit, that you can create some interesting forms and you don't have to just use it as a big blanket gradient tool. I think that people can get themselves in trouble like that. Uh, I mean, I, I say that, but there are some major uh, comic releases that, that have kind of that it's just it just seems a little bit lazy to me but that doesn't make it bad not everything that's lazy is bad so uh anyways i hope that this was informative if you have questions tweet me at the mike wainer uh, i will be back uh, tomorrow or the next day i'm going to try and knock these out at least one per day i'm going to record at least one per day uh, i don't know if i'm going to release more than one per day but uh yeah this has been fun and it was fun to to knock out this first character uh, the next video, and, and I will try and plan each video and let you know what's coming next. I'm going to do, the next video is going to be Rocket, and we're going to do a cell shading style. We're not going to be able to finish it, because cell shading requires some adjustment layers and some stuff over top. And I don't want to have to create masks for this little guy. Um, which would be easy if he was separate, like if his line art was separate. But do you see how it, his line art is connected to Psylocke's leg? So that would mean it's not impossible right it's not a big deal to have to chop him out but it would be kind of a pain in the butt since these guys are all stuck together so i'll just do all that stuff at the end at the end i'll chop out each individual character and double them and then we can do overlays and we can do any kind of screen or the basic special effects like making the sword glow stuff like that we have layers but uh, black cat is down i'm going to create a folder there and we're going to have one folder for every single one of these guys and we're gonna we're gonna do it we're gonna do uh, 16 different comic book styles and if we look at back at this thing if you saw my original notes to make this like i have like 40 things written in each column but my contention is that the elements of comic book style you take you take different elements from each one of these three pillars like the uh the elements of style here take elements of the elements does that make sense no it doesn't uh could you please speak clearly internet idiot I'm trying. So, yeah. We are going to move on into cell shading, which is a flat style of coloring. And it's going to be very saturated. And I'm going to show you how to tile the shadows together and how to pick highlight colors. And we're going to do a slightly, we're not going to do cell shaded. A lot of times you just see it as shadow and highlight, just two colors. I think we're going to do four, four. We're going to have uh, the 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 heavy shadow the, the base half tone um, highlight and uh, one of the other ones quarter tone whatever we don't need we don't need to go all theory right we're just gonna make him look cool so uh, we'll see you guys soon and I hope you enjoyed this video.